Good afternoon, folks. We have a high-risk solar storm scenario shaping up for the weekend. We are going to go over the details of this four-impact event, the what and the when, and everything we should be watching for in the days ahead. Let's begin with where it all started. A big sunspot group on the south of the sun has unleashed several X-class solar flares, including four that released coronal mass ejections of plasma directly at the Earth. In the following shots, you can see the flashes of light, the solar flares, and the shock wave ripple outwards through the solar atmosphere. Those are the signatures of the eruptions, and we have a confirmation in all of the data and expert forecasts that four are on the way. Coronagraph images show that over the last 40 hours, four full halo eruptions have occurred. They are labeled here, and each will strike Earth over the next two to three days. The officials modeled the eruptions and have them beginning to arrive Friday night in the USA, which is early May 11th UTC time. They have the first two combining into one CME, followed by the later plasma shock waves. These forecasts can be off by up to 12 hours in most cases, so this is to be taken lightly, but also, you might notice, there are only three eruptions here. NOAA has still not put the fourth eruption into their model, but we should assume it is coming. They'll probably impact it in the hours ahead, and it will be impacting the Earth on the 12th. Interestingly, a fifth relevant X-class solar flare just erupted at the same sunspot group, but it is turning away, and it does appear the primary electromagnetic push was northward. Also, the initial SOHO data suggests most of the plasma will miss Earth out ahead of its orbit. More on that one in the morning show. So, what are we expecting and what does it mean? We are almost certain to exceed KP5 and 6, level 1 and level 2 solar storms. I'm fairly certain we will hit at least KP7, a strong storm at level 3. I give it a 50-50 shot of level 4 storm conditions, KP8, and about a 25% chance we hit KP9, the highest storm level at level 5. There is about a 10% chance of us getting the kill shot level event, which is about 10 times stronger than the baseline minimum for level 5 KP9 events. And you might ask, what is a solar kill shot? It's basically a global EMP, where the solar storm is so strong that it takes out everything electrical on Earth. It would kill all the power grids, take out internet, cell phones, ATMs, gas stations, banks. Basically, even the conservative government estimates suggest it could throw us back into the Stone Age and hundreds of millions could die. Luckily, like I said, I only give this a 10% chance, which is still noteworthy, but all in all, unlikely. So what are we expecting to happen? Well, for those with our textbook, you can find more information on all of the following in there and in the 2022 supplement, hitting the seismological, meteorological, physiological, psychological, and technological impact potential. We just went over the solar-triggered earthquake information three days ago in a special video, so we're not going to go into too much detail on that here. Just know that for the next 30 days, the Earth capacitor discharge potential is significant for both excess magnitude seismic activity and for volcanoes. In terms of meteorology, the two most important impacts among literally dozens are the jet stream strengthening and the storm enhancement. That goes for tropical systems, tornadoes, thunderstorms, wind, rain amounts, and lightning. This is via the excitement of the global electric circuit up and down through the pressure cells and lasts from the storm onset for about 10 days. Physiologically, every significant solar storm results in heart rate and blood pressure modulation and a resulting increased incidence of all cardiac related events. Autoimmune disorders tend to spike during these periods, as well as episodes of seizure and migraine. High-risk patients are the ones who need to pay most attention to this. For most healthy people, effects will be negligible. Psychologically, all known disorders have enhancement and significant episode enhancement during solar storms, as well as a more general excess of fear, panic, and anxiety responses, which tend to also diminish motor skills and cognitive function. There is also an elevated level of emotional instability associated with these events, and they do affect everyone. So, for example, married folks, 
try not to fight over the weekend. But perhaps the thing most are wondering about is the technological impact. And this falls into two categories, large-scale systems like power grids, internet and cellular, and air traffic systems. And for the larger individual systems like power transformers, things like Gmail and Google Drive or PlayStation Network, and other similar networks. The chances for localized or individual systems failing or glitching, which is everything from a system outage to electrical fires, is very high. Most solar storms tend to increase these by 3 to 20x, and this will be a strong solar storm. I give it a 50-50 shot of regional issues like power grid failures or air traffic issues, and again, only a 10% chance that this is it, the big one, the kill shot. Simply put, I expect quite the light show from the auroras, the northern and southern lights, perhaps even reaching low latitudes. I do expect some inconvenient system and network issues, but not the greatest effects normally attributed to the kill shot. That is unlikely. I'm still monitoring closely for more eruptions, technically still analyzing that fifth X-class solar flare. Subscribe and I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.